So there are four sensitivity data sensitivity levels according to domain five of the highest to certified in cybersecurity. And those are the highly sensitive, moderately sensitive, low sensitivity, and the unrestricted public data. Now, another concept you need to take note is logging. So the concept of logging is talking about documenting what is going on, like uh, creating a log, you know, for what is going on in your system. So every network or device usually have that feature in which they log activities. When someone logs into the system, the username, the date, the time, the things that are being you know, carried out, activities that is going on within the system or the network are always being logged. So on that domain file, we talk the concept of logging. So there are ingress monitoring tools. So ingress is basically talking about traffic that is flowing inwards, you know, that is coming in. So ingress monitoring tools, when you talk about logging, are tools that monitor, you know, things or traffic or events that are coming inwards into the network or the uh, device. So we have firewalls, we have gateways. We have remote authentication servers. We have IDS, IPS. IDS is intrusion detection system and IPS intrusion prevention systems tools. We have the SIM tool, the S, uh, security information and, and event management tools. Like we mentioned, we explained these tools in the previous, uh, in the last video on that domain four. And we also have anti-malware solutions. So these things help to checkmate inflow of traffic into the uh, network or into your device so this is categorized under login so when you are looking at domain five check login these are concepts you need to take note of another concept here is login which is egress monitoring data type so when we talk about egress these are outgoing so uh, we are monitoring it's talking about the kind of data login here is making mention of the kind of data the data types that you mentioned they are outflow so when these data are being sent out of your device or network, they are also specially monitored. So when you are sending an email, an email is often monitored, you know, or checked, is logged in your system. So when you are, well, okay, let me, the, the explanation here is that all these data types are being logged. Everything that is going on or going out through these data types or in form of these data types, they are being logged in your system so and you can always check into your system to where the log uh how to check the log file and see information about this thing so when you are copying uh something into a portable media into a flash drive or a cd rom you know it's going to be logged a file transfer protocol so when ftp services is being used it's going to be logged when you are posting something to web pages or websites the network will log it and then what is going out through the application programming interface the api to they are always locked. So this is a concept you need to take note when you are talking about securing data within your system under domain five. Another concept you need to take note of is data encryption. So, and then we have best practices for data, for securing data. So data encryption here is a best practice. It is always good when you are sending data or traffic is going out of your system to always uh, encrypt it so that when data is in transit, it cannot be intercepted and understood. When it is intercepted, because most likely it might be intercepted, but when it is intercepted because data is encrypted, it is not readable. It just becomes useless to whoever intercepted the data. So the process of encrypting data in plain text with a key and algorithm to create a cipher text, you know, is what is data encryption all about so we are talking about using a converting a plain text into a cipher text using what a key and an algorithm so so when you are encrypting a data that means for the data to be understood it has to be decrypted that is the process of removing and removing the encryption so this process involves a key and an algorithm you know so this is what is used to encrypt and also when you are decrypting you also need a key and an algorithm so if the key you are using to encrypt if the key and algorithm you use to encrypt encrypt the data is the same key and algorithm you use to decrypt then it's called a symmetric you know encryption then if the keys that you are using to encrypt is different from the key that is being used to decrypt it so after converting from plain text to cyber text if you require a different key and an algorithm to understand the you know, ciphertext, to convert it back to a plain text, 
if you're using a different key it is called asymmetric encryption so you need to take note this can be very confusing so you need to go over it over a few times for you to be able to understand the concept very well another key concept you need to take note of is hashing so hashing here is taking an input or a set of data arbitrary data mixing uh, encoding it or combining it with a text or a data and then getting a fixed length result of a hash value so what we are saying here is that if you have a data for instance in an uh, a document and then you want to hash it so if you add another set of code or algorithm and apply it to this data you have a result that is called a hash value now the difference between encryption and hash is, hash and hashing is the fact that when you when you hash a particular data it becomes it comes out permanent or another thing you need to take note about hashing is that if you have uh five different documents and you apply a particular hash hashing techniques to those five documents even though those five documents are different you will always get you know a fixed length of hash value so the hash value that will come out is going to be fixed. for example if the hash value is uh, uh 128 bits so regardless of the kind of document whether it's a picture whether it's a word document whether it's a video regardless of the kind of data you are hashing the result you always get is will always be 128 bits so that is what hashing does and then the thing about hashing is that when you hash a document or you hash a data like that you cannot reverse it it's irreversible so that's the benefit of hashing unlike encryption when you encrypt you can always decrypt it back as long as you have the algorithm or the key so another concept you need to take note here is functions of cryptographic hash so like i said cryptographic hash hashing is very useful and it's easy to compute the hash value for any given message all you need to do is to apply uh whatever technology you are using to hash to it and then you quickly get you can get a hash value and hashing also is non-reversible unlike encryption and decryption process is non-reversible like i just explained then the content integrity assurance so when you have an hashed uh, data when you hash the data and you have an hash value it is infeasible to modify such that you now reverse the hash and come back so uh this is always very useful because when you hash a, a data and you share it or you are sending and someone gets hold of it no even though they know the technology you use to hash it you cannot reverse the hashing process so it is infeasible so it helps to maintain the integrity of data when you hash it another uh, function or of cryptographic hash is the uniqueness so it is in it is invisible to find two or more different sensible messages that hash to the same value now remember don't mix it up the other time i mentioned that you always have a fixed length which that is if you have five or six different data and you hash it you always get if you hash it with a particular uh technology maybe md5 or sh256 or let me say sh128 if you hash it with that particular technique the length of hash value you get will be the same thing for five different data but the hash value will not be the same thing the hash length will be the same thing but the hash value will not be the same thing so you need to take note of this they are always unique so if you hash five different uh data the hash value that you get for each of them will be different uh, and then deterministic too which means that the same input will always generate the same hash that means if for instance i sent a, a document in word a microsoft word document now to someone and i tell the person that i hash i use a an uh, md5 hashing technique to hash it and then i send the hash value to him so if the person has a copy of the same microsoft word and then he hashes his own document with the same md5 he's going to get the same hash value that i got despite the fact that we are working in different you know, location or using different devices if we are hashing the same document from two different sources but using the same hashing technique we always get the same hash value so it helps to 
check the integrity. So if, for instance, if I send a document to you 10 years ago, and I also send you and I hash it now, or if I send the document to you, no matter when I send the document, and I hash it, take the document and I tell you, okay, this document I'm sending to you, this is the hash value. You can keep the hash value safe somewhere. So if you keep the document in your system for a number of days or for a number of time, and you want to reference the document, I want to be sure that the document has not changed from the one I sent to you. You can now apply the MD5 to the document you have, hash it. If you still get the same hard value as the hard value I sent to you initially, it shows that the document is intact. But if you get a different hash value using the same hash technique, you know, that I sent to you, then you know that something has happened to the document you have. It has either been corrupted or someone has, you know, interfered with it. So this is help, this helps to maintain the integrity of documents. So uh this it's 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 the same hash uh hash techniques always provide just applied on the same document always give the same hash value so another concept you need to take note of is concept of configuration management so configuration management is a process and discipline that is used to ensure that the only changes made to a system are those that have been authorized and validated so because configuration is basically topic talking about configuration management is simply talking about talking about the fact that before any changes happen to a configuration, it has to be authorized and validated. So there's a configuration management system that authorizes every changes proposed. So as a front desk engineer, for instance, and I'm working on a particular file and I want to make a change to it, I cannot just arbitrarily make a change to it. I have to request, make a request to the configuration management in place. And then my request should be authorized and validated before it can be applied to the document so for configuration management helps to make sure that changes abrupt changes are not just made to data and you know documents or information within an organization then we have the configuration management process so the configuration management process usually uh, made up of the following which is identification you have to baseline it you have to change control and verification and audits you know identification you need to identify the data or identify whoever is trying to make the change then you have to baseline the changes that is being requested to certain you know policy or certain standards the change control is to monitor how the changes are being implemented and then verification and audit so when data configuration change has been made it has to be verified and then audit process needs to take place for it to be sure that the right uh, configuration changes have been made now we also have configuration management elements so these are the things that you find while doing configuration so we have inventory inventory baseline we have updates and patches all these are always seen uh, or make up configuration and you need to understand what an inventory is what baselines are what are updates and what are patches